But you have to take into context that, that in terms of aiming for, for, for the 80 percent target, um, that was a stretching target and had been so uh, from the previous year. Um, and there had been two targets in the report, one, one 80 percent for managers and one lower figure for, 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 for all staff. But we obviously felt that all staff needed to have the same opportunity that there should be a differential between managers and, 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 and the rest of the workforce. Um, but of course, when you dribble that in, uh, we do have a number of dispersed workforces. And for example, in our library services, we have staff who are only employed on Saturdays. Uh, so it does, it does highlight some difficulties in terms of our processes to get right, in terms of making sure that they, those staff have the opportunity to be supported. We discussed in this committee before about uh, school crossing control, for example, and how we need to ensure that we, we, we do get to them uh, at appropriate times. We have dispersed workforces in, in, our, in our leisure centres who work uh, shift patterns. So it does create some challenges for us, but that's not by way of any excuse because everybody, as I said, is entitled to, to performance appraisal. So it's only by way of, of, of context. And in terms of some of our su support me mechanisms, you know, the transaction centre uh, was one of the areas where, where we, we made some significant changes last year in terms of creating the transaction centre, drawing together a whole number of staff from a whole uh, cluster of uh, different, different areas of work. And our concentration on that was to ensure that the business processes were really important in following and supporting. Um, and, and as a consequence of that, in terms of embedding the, the, the actual transaction centre, um, we, we didn't perhaps get to as many as we could have done. However, uh, we, we are pleased to report that, 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 that they're way over the target now in terms, in terms, of, in terms of delivering it, and that is a really positive and strong, strong message. Um, in terms of in terms of activities, I think I might have covered that. Um, you know, clearly, in, in any organisation, there will be maternity um, um, leave, there will be long-term sickness absence, uh, there will always be, be absentees from it. Uh, and again, that's by way of contact. But again, it's not an excuse. Uh, and for those people when they come back to work, it should be on the priority just for them to be uh, Or even, as we know, with maternity leave, it is planned, so I can't do it at the end of the cycle. So I think it's really important that we don't lose track of and lose sight of. Uh, the, the need to do this. Paragraphs three and beyond, you know, really, I think, acknowledge again that we failed uh, to, to achieve or fall short in this particular area, uh, and your concerns around these particular matters. Uh, and we're grateful for the, for the input that you put in to ensure that, that we keep on track and try to ensure that we do maintain the progress that we have. As I said earlier, we haven't stopped in terms of trying to improve our, our performance, Chair. Uh, as we've seen, today's figures uh, slightly up on the when the report was written just two weeks ago. So we continue to do that. And of course, April uh, 16 uh, starts our new cycle. So we will not be taking a foot off the, off, off, off the case then. Uh, we, we, as we know, there will be a, a new um, operating model that we put in uh, by, by the chief executive over, over the coming weeks. Part of that is around the culture. Part of that is about compliance. And I know you've been concerned about ensuring that people do follow due process, we've got we've simplified procedures, we've simplified processes, and really what we want to do is managers and staff to work together to ensure that these are taken. So as part of that, I do know that we, we, we are currently constructing the opportunity that allows the, the, the opportunity to understand, uh, for managers to understand their, their accountability, their assigned accountability letter around their budgets. We are thinking of introducing this around our performance appraisals and maybe some other issues as well. So that as a manager, I will sign up for I will know what, what my duties and responsibilities are, I can be held accountable for that and also any consequences that might put or might, might fail uh, to do that. So I think it's clearly important that we do that and uh, as paragraph 3.4 says, you know, we've clearly communicated that to all managers that would affect them the first level. There will be a new challenge for them to just be protected. So I'd like to hopefully outline for you the, the changes that have taken place um, uh, and should try to uh, provide some context for, for what we're trying to, try to do. Uh, again, you know, we, we've fallen somewhere short, but nevertheless, I'm confident that moving into the new year, we have achieved higher targets now in terms of performance than we did last year. So I'm confident that moving into the new year, we'll have a, a better chance and better opportunities to, 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 to achieve the targets that we set for next year. And I'm happy for us to take any questions about the future. Thanks, Chair. It seems to be moving in the right direction, but I'm sure we've got some questions and comments. So, in the grounds of fairness, I think. Yeah. Anyone? Steve? Yeah. And Bruce. Okay, I'll try and remember that order. Bruce, great. 
quite a lot, and particularly when you take into account that a number of our staff in that particular directory have worked in one stop shops, they work in library services, they were, as I said, some of our fixed at weekend working. Um, so it, it does provide, it, it does uh, exercise in terms of some of, some of the management opportunities to do that. And when you think of some small numbers of staff actually working those, it's very difficult to go and undertake a performance appraisal uh, in a library and one stop shop setting uh, when staff were actually uh, in, in place in public. Um, it's, that's not an excuse, and again, it's a challenge, but it's, 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 and it's surmountable. Uh, we think we have to recognise some of the context. And then, then when you look at that for the whole of the organisation, you know, over 3,000 uh, of our workforce have received, uh, have, have received performance appraisal. Uh, so, yes, we, we, we could anticipate and should be at a higher rate uh, at February if our target figure was, was that, that, that September. Um, but we did, got, we did get off to an enormously slow start. I mean, to come back to the question about the chief executive, um, it, it highlight those early years. <coughs> Does he continue to do so? Yes, he does. And hence why I think we've seen, well, we've still seen uh, an increase month on month uh, from September. Uh, and it gives me, absolutely gives me no pleasure whatsoever to sit here and again in front of the, uh, the, the committee uh, and, and try to justify all of this. There is no doubt, uh, as I said earlier, that this is, this is about compliance you know, and, and, and managers need to understand that.
opportunities to be had with a very successful and well run appraisal system. So my, my sort of challenge is, is there anything in going in at this point, when we start the new cycle in April, to link appraisal targets with the little plan directly so we can help to see the improved performance across the board? It's not good enough. We can miss our 
target, but it's getting much, much better. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, Jane.
We're projecting at the moment that we'll probably cover our 40 to 14,000 pounds, 40 to 15,000 pounds less at the end of this financial year. So the 900,000 that's roughly what we're looking at. Um, the cost of factor in to the, to the sums amounts in respect to factor of breaking the team. So in terms of the 900,000, it's, it's not just there for awards. Um, there's a cost in there to bring it, um, the form of charges when you're issuing the pay cards and that sort of thing. Um, so that's what we're estimating we'll have left. Um, the other, one of the other recommendations um, that we have highlighted in, in the overview, just to mention, um, is to actually look at what we might be able to do with the Royal Food Bank um, and whether or not we could make a donation to Royal Food Bank. As far as looking at the logistics of it, um, and what we're actually asking the Minister for now is that now we look at those logistics really and decide whether or not they would want us to actually take that step. Um, we, we're, we're thinking that we'd probably be looking at somewhere around about £7,000 based on the way that um, the food bank operates, which is a little bit different to the way that we administer support for food through our food welfare assistance. Um, the only other issue is whether or not.
like I said, they're more probably is it more likely than my concern is that the, the people aren't told the way because they don't know the plan because they don't get much chance of getting it there's not enough time to have. So is it I'm hoping it's a case where people are thinking, well, I would like to have things.